In this video, we're going to do another exam style question on impulse and momentum. We're told model train A of 100 kilograms travels on horizontal straight rails at a speed of 34 meters per second. Traveling towards this train is model train B, which weighs 70 kilograms and is traveling at a speed of 25.5 meters per second. The trains collide and couple together, forming a single body C. In part A, we're asked to calculate the speed and direction of C after the collision. And in part B, we're asked to calculate the impulse A exerts on B during the collision. Let's go ahead and model this up. So we can use the conservation of linear momentum for the first part. So what I'm going to have is a before shot. So we'll have A and B. So we'll put these now like so. So here's my before shot. And then we'll have an after shot. And that's going to give us C. And C now is going to be A and B together. So we can place it like so. So let's put some information on. So we can put the mass on each of these. We've got now 100, so let's put that on A, that's 100. We've got 70 for B, and we've got a combined mass now of 170 kilograms for C. So we can say that this is before, and then below we've got after. Let's go ahead and put now the speeds on. These are traveling towards each other, so we'll have A in this direction, and then we'll have B in this direction. So Putting the information on, we can see now that A has a speed of 34 meters per second. So let's go ahead and write that on. So we've got 34 meters per second. We've got B, which is going to be 25.5 meters per second. So what I'm doing is taking now the direction A, B to be positive here. If we now consider the speed, and this is going to be of C afterwards, we can go ahead and put the arrow on here. So we can see from here that the, the particles are going to move off now in the direction AB. If we were unsure, all we would do is end up with a negative value if we got this wrong. So if we ended up with a negative value, we'd simply say that now the uh, particle C is going to be moving now in the direction BA instead of AB. So let's put this on. We can say V meters per second. So stating the conservation of linear momentum, we can say that the total momentum prior to the collision will be the same as the total momentum after the collision. Momentum is just mass times by velocity. So let's go ahead and look at this before. We've got a mass of 100 multiplied by a velocity of 34 meters per second. I add to that now the mass, which is 70, multiplied by the velocity. We need to be careful here as this is going to be a negative value. We've got minus 25 0.5 meters per second and that must be equal to the mass which is 170 multiplied by the velocity which is v so at this stage now we can simply go ahead and find the value of v you could divide through i suppose by 10 here but i think we're going to have to work this out anyway let's go ahead and do that let's write 3400 we're going to have minus and let's work out that value so that's 70 times by 25.5 that's going to give us now 1785, so 1785, and then we'll divide that now by the 170, and that will give us the value of V. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we now put this for a calculator, we've got 3,400, subtract the answer I've just found, and divide by 170, and then we can see that that's going to give us now 9.5 meters per second. So we can say V will be equal to 9.5 meters per second and this now is in the direction a b so in the direction a b so direction now and i'm going to state that that is a b so we're moving in the same direction that a was moving in before we're now asked to calculate the impulse a exerts on b during the collision so let's go ahead and look at that so what we'll do is the following we will have now the impulse here so we're going to have b and i'm going to model this as two separate particles so we're going to have now the before shot, and the before shot gives us that we have now the 25.5. So let's put these on. So we've got 70 and 70. We've got now the 25.5, which will be now negative relative to the impulse. And then we'll have this positive quantity, the other side that we've just found. So let's look at that. This is going to give me the 25.5 meters per second. And then we've got now V, which we found to be 9.5 meters per second. We know that the impulse is the change in momentum, and we can write that now as I is equal to m, where m is the mass, multiplied by the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So we've got the impulse will be equal to 70 
then we're going to have now 9.5 minus the initial velocity. And remember, that's going to be negative as I've defined the impulse from now AB. So we're looking at in the AB direction. So minus 25.5. So let's go ahead and calculate that. That's going to give me now I, and we're going to get on here at 70, and then that's going to give me 35. So 70 lots of 35 is going to give me now 2,450, and that will be Newton seconds. So that now is the impulse. So we're looking now at the impulse A exerts on B during the collision. The impulse B exerts on A will be equal and opposite. So you can work out either. It's fairly straightforward to work out this one right here. Okay, we're now told immediately after collision, a constant breaking force is applied to C. C takes five seconds to hold. In part C, we're asked to calculate the magnitude of the constant breaking force and state any assumptions you make. So the assumptions I'm going to make is that we're modeling this as a particle and there's no friction. We're not told of any friction, so we'd write particle and no friction. So let's just write this here before we start, because often we can forget. So assumptions, we're modeling as a particle and there is no friction. So particle, no friction. And a quick sentence will give you the one to two marks, generally one mark that you would get in the exam. So let's go ahead and model this up. So what we've got then is our uh, C. So we've got our particle C, and C has now this combined mass of 170. So let's just model this up, and we can place that like so. We've got now this force, and this force is going to be now opposing the motion, and we'll put it in this direction right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we want to find now, we're asked to find the value now of this constant breaking force, and I'll just call this one F. So what we'll have is F just here, we're going to have now on the particle, we've got 170, that's the mass. And then we'll consider now the acceleration. I'm going to put it in this direction, which will actually give us then a deceleration. So let's go ahead and collect some information. So let's call this A meters per second squared. So using SUVAT, I'm going to collect the information we're given in the question. So we have the following, S, U, V, A and T. We know the initial velocity is going to be 9.5 meters per second. We've worked that out now from the previous part. So that gives us our initial velocity. So the initial velocity is going to be 9.5, and that's meters per second. We've got a final velocity of zero as it's going to be coming to rest, and we're told this is going to take five seconds. So let's just go ahead and check all that information. So we've got five seconds, we've got zero and 9.5. So what we want to do now is find the value of f, and we can use Newton's second law. What I need for this though is the acceleration. So what we're going to do shortly is now Newton's second law, and we're going to consider now the horizontal motion. So we're going to look at force is equal to mass times acceleration and resolve parallel to this plane right here. So using SUVAT, let's go ahead and use SUVAT, we can say that v is equal to u plus at, so subbing in the values, 0 will be equal to 9.5, and then we're going to have, and I'll call this one A, we're going to have now plus 5A. So all I've got is V is equal to U plus AT. So from this, we can rearrange. So if we rearrange, we can say now that A will be equal to minus 9.5 over 5. So all I've done at this stage is simply gone ahead and subtracted 5a from both sides and divided through. So that's going to give me 9.5 divided by 5. So let's put this in. So we can say that the acceleration is going to be minus, and that's going to be minus 1.9, and that will be meters per second squared. So minus 9.5 over 5 is minus 1.9. Uh, let's just check that. Just check that works, 0.5 divided by 5 should give us 1.9, there we go. So now we've got the acceleration. So let's go ahead and apply this. So we've got this value right here, and this is going to now be uh, minus 1.9, and that's going to be meters per second squared. So what we can state now is using Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. Now, I'm taking this to be the positive direction. It would probably be easier to take the negative, but we can say that minus F, that is now the force opposing motion will be equal to the mass, which is 170, multiplied now by the acceleration, which is going to be minus 1.9. So all we're using is Newton's second law. So let's go ahead and work that out. 
So we've got 1.9, let's do that. So 170 times by 1.9 should give us 323 newtons. So that gives us now the magnitude of the force. So what I've said now is essentially the force is acting in the opposite direction. It's got a magnitude of positive value of 323. So let's just check my calculations. 170 times by 1.9. 170 times by 1.9 should be 323. So if we look at this now, we've done all of these. Calculate magnitude of constant breaking force and state any assumptions. We've got now a particle and there's no friction involved in the model.